Hey guys, and welcome back to Number Nine Farms. Today we're going to be making elderberry syrup, and I'm going to show you how I do it. So um, this is what I've been doing since 2014, and so many people have told me that they have tried other brands, other people's um, versions, and they always come back to me because they wanted to get a cheaper price. I see you sneaking around over there. <laughs> um, but it's, uh, they, they've even come back and they said, oh, I'm so sorry that I left you. I'm, it's okay, guys, really. You know, you, you pick and choose who you want to get things from. It's okay, but I'm going to go ahead and share this with you today. And um, also have a, um, the whole, the pictures and everything on my blog that go back, I'm not sure exactly, around 2015 maybe. So that will be there also for you and I will put the link for you. And we're gonna go ahead and get started. So the first thing, I make large batches. So there is no small batch. I got nine kids, so uh, nothing has been done small. So here we go. Um, first thing you're gonna need is two gallons of distilled water. And the reason I always use distilled water is because um, you don't want it to mold or anything. And it, everybody always asks me, how long does it last? How long does it last? Well, it lasts from season to season in my refrigerator, as long as you don't like double dip or also something like um, maybe drink right from the container or anything like that. Because if you were the only person drinking it, but go ahead and dump two distilled gallons of uh, um, water into, I have a 16 quart pot, so I'm gonna go ahead and show you that so you can see. And I have all in organic ingredients. So there we go. This way you can go ahead and see everything. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on the stove on like medium high. Cause we're looking to get a boil. And then I'm gonna do seven cups, seven cups now of organic elderberries. And this, I also have two elderberry bushes here. And I also um, have a couple of people at the farmer's market who bring me, because we have a lot of the bushes. So they'll bring it to me and they'll bring it right off the vine. And once you get it off the vine, or the bush, whatever you want to call it, um, you take and freeze them. And once you freeze them, you then take the um, each one of them and just shake them because the vine itself or the plant, the um, leaf, not the they all that's all toxic, but the berries itself are not. So you want to only just use the berries. So you want to pick out anything that isn't um, supposed to be inside the. The berries itself usually you're okay you don't usually have a lot of extra things in there so to speak so um two gallons i'm gonna go ahead and turn this off so you don't have to see the next gallon go in but we're gonna do set two gallons and seven cups okay now i'm back got the two gallons in seven cups now usually i get about four cups out of each one of these bags. And these bags usually run anywhere from 18 to $30. All right, got a piece of a one right here. There's four. Oops, sorry about that. Making all that extra noise. Not used to working over here for a lot of things, um, but I'm trying to eliminate any going up and down stairs because of my back. and not wearing myself out like I did earlier. And I was supposed to start all this stuff early this morning and I just was not having the energy. Six. Seven. 
So I'll go ahead and use a stainless steel. Get them all mixed in. And now we're just gonna go ahead and add the ingredients. I'm gonna go ahead and tell you everything now because like I said, this is a large batch. So for everything, let's see, I do uh, a tablespoon of ground cloves, a tablespoon of whole cloves, and all these are organic, and a tablespoon of ground ginger. And sometimes I come back and add more ginger, and I will actually do this whole you see this piece? Usually I do about two thumb sizes. So, and I don't trim the skin off or anything like that. And I've washed it really well. And this is an organic piece. And usually I get that right at Kroger. Kroger has the organic um, ginger. And this, because I believe in ginger as a healing property for sure. So I just do just like that. And I'm going to show you the whole process from start to finish. And once I get this boiling, it will simmer then for usually an hour to two hours, depending on how long. Because I go by how much um, it's in the pot here. And so once I see that it's um, shrank down some, then I'll know that it's uh, evaporated some and condensed. So then what we do after that is we will um, let it sit for 24 hours. That way it just has time to soak up. Then we go and add the, the honey and, no, not the honey, next. The, um, we go and strain it. And what we do, we strain it in a bucket, which I'm gonna show you that. And also we press it overnight in a cheese press. So, cause I wanna get every bit of those healing properties out of those elderberries. And I just keep on doing this and getting off that ginger. And I also add cinnamon sticks and I only use the Ceylon cinnamon, which is the true, true cinnamon. I do not use any fake cinnamon. So this cinnamon is from Sri Lanka and this is real um cinnamon and i also use the cinnamon sticks which where did i do with the cinnamon sticks oh here they are these are real cinnamon sticks and i also get all these from um hamtown spicery and tony he doesn't usually even put any of my stuff in a um jar unless i'm buying it right from him then because usually i email him and just say hey tony um i need some uh cinnamon sticks and you can see the cinnamon sticks are not like the cinnamon sticks that, uh, let me show you what they look like before I add them in. But I usually add two or three of those in. Look at these cinnamon sticks. You see real, like the, I don't know if they're called fake cinnamon sticks or what, but they're different. They don't do this. You see that? Look at that just layers and it smells amazing and that's what I do so that way when we strain it this right here infuses a lot better than those fake uh, cinnamon I guess <laughs> I know they're not fake but they're definitely not the same kind of cellulon cinnamon and remember I've told y'all before how Tony has gave me um, cinnamon leaves Real cinnamon leaves. Let me show you what they look like. You can come see too, Bruce. That's a real cinnamon leaf and it smells amazing. Mmm. I wish y'all could smell it. Mmm. It smells so good. He said, see what you can do with these. So I made some tea with it. Okay, and that was really all. That's all the ingredients that I need to put in there for you. I will write those down at the bottom for you and I also use a, 11 cups of our honey. So we'll go we'll go through all that. So I'm gonna leave you now and I'll show you the as it goes along. 
Okay, so it was at time now to add the cinnamon in. So this, I usually add about 10 tablespoons of the cinnamon. And Tony grinds this himself too. It's five, six, seven, eight. Hey, Goldie. What you making, Madre? I am making elderberries. Elderberry syrup. So. Eight, nine, and ten. And eleven for good luck. Um, Tony says, what do you do with all this cinnamon? And I tell him I'm going to make elderberry syrup with it. And um, I get a pound probably a month from him, a pound of the cinnamon. And like I said, he usually puts it in a bag. And then sometimes he, you know, he has it. If I buy him right then, they'll, he'll have it in a jar for me. And he also sells it in a can. But I don't need it, all that fancy stuff. So I've already added everything else. And now all this will, once it gets really hot, it'll... Go ahead and start to boil. Then we'll put it on the simmer for an hour to two. And what else was I gonna tell you about? Um, I think that was really it. All the other, okay, you could, you could add things like juniper berries, star anise, um, you could add, uh, or star anise, whatever you wanna say, uh, echinacea. You could add that to it. You could add some turmeric. You could even grind little fresh um, of the uh, roots of the turmeric. Uh, but see, I can't change my recipe now because I could change it if it was for myself, but it's not just for myself. Um, so I could change it um, if for, you know, if I wasn't having people that come over here and pick it up. Um, but I can't now because, you know, this is how it is. So... You know, they'll, everybody would notice is what I'm trying to get out. All right, guys, catch you up on the next. Hey guys, I just wanted to show you where we are. We are boiling really, really good. So now is the time you want to turn it down to a simmer, usually around the, the middle part of your dial, whatever you have for cooking. But we usually cook this next door at on a gas stove. So. One time, I'll just tell you this so you know, one time over here, I was like, oh, I'll just leave it on high because I left it on high on the gas stove. And then I turned it down to, you know, medium. Next thing I know over here, it was boiling over. So uh, be really careful on where you do your simmering. Yes, it made a huge mess. And it, so I'm gonna go ahead now and turn it way down probably like halfway so go ahead and now and let it simmer and it will simmer about an hour to two hours and keep an idea on where it is on your pan so you'll know that it um simmered out simmered down should i say <laughs> okay guys it looks like we are simmered down a lot you can see the difference in the pan there I'm going to go ahead now and leave it like this with so it can keep venting and the steam can keep coming out until it cools and I'm going to let it sit for 24 hours. And then I will be back on the next step. Okay guys, so now I want to show you that it's time to go ahead and dump the elderberry syrup. So what I have is a five gallon bucket here and I've got a cheese um, bag. This is actually a cheese bag, but I bought this one just for making the elderberry syrup. That's why it's all faded from the elderberry syrup stuff. And it's just, a, you just go on like a cheese website and buy um, a, a large cheese bag and it or fits in a five gallon bucket or even a wine shop. Wine shops have them too, because they use this to, um, or beer making supplies. And then this is a five gallon ring that actually you can get these on Amazon. Just look for a five gallon ring. And then we, in order to reinforce it, since this is so small, um, we have to put these uh, 
paper towels in it because it, it want, just wants to slide and pull down. So now go ahead, Bruce, and dump the elderberry syrup into the bucket. And I usually hold on to it also just to make sure that it doesn't slip or anything. Okay. That was my musical career. I'm good it ended. Yeah. And then we get something here to scrape with the bucket. I don't get it. And then we just scrape it down. And it takes, I don't know, Bruce, how long does it usually take to drain? Well, overnight. And then I'll put it in the press and press it out and let it drip overnight at least to get all the goodies out of it. If the real goodies are down, need to be squeezed out. So we of get... the plant, or the berries, should I say. Yep. But we will not be able to do this without this cheesecloth. This will not happen. Yeah. Or, uh, yeah, because this is not like regular cheesecloth. This it's is nylon. nylon. It's, really strong. it's really strong. And like I said, you can get them at beer making supplies or cheese making or wine making supplies. Once we put it in that press. So it there. takes overnight now to basically drain into the bucket. And then now, next, our next step will be to put it into the press. Bruce, tell the story now. All right, so we're going to put, take this off right now. And this is where I usually have help, but my cameraman is busy. So what we do is I pull this out and just let it drip for a few minutes. And you can see how it's just coming right out of the bag. And see, he's he's putting some real big strength into this squeezing. Yeah, so if you didn't have this not this bag like this, you would really not be able to squeeze it. It just bust and then all your stuff would go back in there. I put this up here. And this is a colander here that has like um it's just a holes, little tiny holes in it. And then we take and put a, little plate, a on plate on top. And now what? We usually put like some weights on it. Yeah, but anymore, I'm going to get the cheese press out now. And we're going to go ahead and put it in the press so we can see that. All right, guys, so now I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, speed up the process a little bit because we're kind of in a hurry every day from that the rest of our life. So which I have a cheese press here that we bought and we use it for making our hard cheeses, but you could, you could we use it for this also. And it's a pretty simple process. And there's plenty of uh, homemade presses oh, yeah, you can at make home them. and you don't you don't need this cheese press but bruce would rather buy one than make it because I, he'd be making for the rest of his yes, life if i made everything she wanted to have i would still be, be chained to a table saw for the rest of my life all right so now so we got the cheese press here and we're going to drain into our bucket but and so you drop your little weights on there and this thing is magical. Now I do. And you can see it. I, I leave a little something on it to drain. You, you have to get a little something smaller. And it'll continue to press and, and all you use is the weights. To lock it in place. This thing works great. It works great for cheese. Where'd you buy it? Um, cheese. Cheese making supply company yeah, in New England. That's yeah, that's um where you buy all this. Yeah, um, well, my brain went dead right then. I couldn't even think what the here. Let me I'm trying to think of the her name that all invented this place. And I, I can't yeah, even. Yeah, we used to do the little class. We used to teach the classes for cheese making. 
can't and remember everything. That's what happens when you get old. Oh my gosh, that's going to drive me. <laughs> we probably got a kit too somewhere from. Yeah, that, there, no, that's, I was trying to see, oh, what? There's a magnet too for, that was on one of the refrigerators over here. Refrigerators. Well, the fridge, I was going to shorten it, the fridge. Refrigerators. All right, so y'all get the point now. So, okay. All right. It took months to develop my special leaning process here. I use one big mouth cannon ring for each side, and that'll let it drip. And yeah, and it'll still be dripping in the morning. That's probably because my table's crooked too. So, but it'll sit here and drip, and it'll get all the goodies out of it. Look at all that. Yeah, we used to do it without the cheese thing and then my boss had a big brain idea, so I used this and it's been great ever since. That's what I get all the big bucks for. <laughs> That's what we pay her the big bucks for. <laughs> Not really, but. <sighs> all right, guys, I think we'll see you when the next step goes in. All right, guys, so now we have the elderberry syrup all ready to go, and we're getting ready to add 11 cups of um, honey. And this is our honey. All right, so now we're going to stir it up, and then there you have it. There's your elderberry syrup. Eight cups. Yeah, I know, but I'm just saying in the video here that that's the next step. There goes the rest of the honey. And now we put it in jars. There goes the rest of the honey. And now we put it in jars.